grade 7 math, number 5.1a, finding percent increase. Now we can find a percent decrease also. We're going to do that in 5.1b, the next video. So percents can be used to describe how an amount changes. And we'll use this, percent change equals the amount of change over the original amount, to find the percent change. Because this is what we're finding. See, it's on this side of the equal sign. The amount of change is going to be the numerator, and the original amount is going to be the denominator, and we're going to divide, okay? So the change may be an increase or a de decrease, like I said. A percent increase describes how much an amount increases compared to an original amount. So we compare an old amount, like you're making $9 an hour, to a new increased amount, like now you're making $9.50 an hour. And then we figure out the percentage that it increased by. So, to find the percent increase from $9 to $9.50, the first thing we do is subtract $9 from the $9.50 to find that amount of change, because that's going to be our numerator, the amount of change. So $9.50 take away $9 is $0.50. Cents. So we're going to put the $0.50 cents up here. We're going to plug in the old original amount you made, the $9, down here. And it's going to end up looking like this, because it was 0 0.50, right, and a $9. But we really don't need this, and we really don't need the zero on that side of the decimal point on the that side of the five. So we really have 0.5 divided by nine, okay? And we do the math. This decimal point goes straight up, right? That's where it belongs. And we say nine goes into five how many times? Zero. So there's a zero there. Nine goes into 50 how many times? Well, nine times five is 45. We put the five there. We write our 45, do our subtraction, and we get another five. So we drop another zero, and again, 9 goes into 50 five times because it's 45, and uh-oh, it's going to keep doing that, isn't it? I could drop another zero and it'd be 50, and we take away 45 and it would have another five. Oh, it's just going to keep on repeating this five, isn't it? So we're going to stop because we're trying to find a percent change. So we really don't want to have more than three spaces away from that decimal point to come up with a percent because a percent is part of 100, isn't it? And we're already getting into the thousands place. So we need to round this off and turn it into percentage. And this 5 tells that 5 to round up to a 6. And he's finished with his job and he goes away. So now we've got 0 0.06. Well, 0 0.06 means 6 over 100, doesn't it? That's 6 hundredths. That's 6%. I'm going to use an approximation sign instead of an equal sign because the real equal is 0 0.0. 55555 five, 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 and it goes on forever, right? And we wrote 0 0.06. So that's just an approximate answer. So we can't use a real equal sign. We're using an approximation because it is an approximation. We got about a 6% increase. That's not bad. The cost of living is usually a 3% increase. So if you got that raise from $9 to, to $9.50, that's a pretty good increase. All right. Find the percent increase from 6.70 to 8.00. So the first thing we're going to do is subtract the 670 from the 800. And the 800 minus the 670, or the 8.00 minus the 6.70, however you want to look at it, is a 1.30 or 130. So we're going to take it as 1.3, all right? And we have to put it over the old number the 6.7, because this 0 isn't really necessary, is it? And neither is this one, or that one, right? Because of the decimal point. So 6.7 is good. Now, we can just multiply the numerator and the denominator by 10 and move the decimal place over to the back of them, can't we? So instead of having 1.3 and 6.7, if we multiply both of them by 10, whoops, that's going to move them over, isn't it? It's going to move that decimal point to back here. And we'll have a 13 and a 67. All right? So now we're putting 67 into 13. Nope. Into 130. Yeah, it'll fit in one time. So we do our subtraction and get 63. We add a 0, drop it down. And how many times can 67 fit into 630? Do a little math on the side, and 603 is 67 times 9, so I put a 9 here. And I put the 603, do the subtraction, get a 27, drop another 0. 67 can go into 270. Did a little multiplication on the side, 268. 
We can take that away and get a two left over, but ah, we're trying to find a percent. So we don't want to get too far away from that decimal point, right? Because a percent is two spaces from the decimal. All right, so now we've got 0.194. We need to round it off. Well, the four tells the nine to stay the same, and then when he's done with his job, he just goes away. So because it was a four there, we're not going to use an equal sign because we're rounding. So it's not an exact equal, is it? It's an approximation, just like that other one, because we got rid of the 4. And it becomes a 19% increase, right? We have a 19% increase. Let's try it one last time for those who think they need it, all right? We're going to find the percent increase from 54 to 70. Now there's no decimals, okay? So the first thing we do is we subtract. We take the 54 from the 70 and we get 16, okay? So that's going to be as the numerator, and the old number, the 54, is going to be the denominator, the old number that didn't go up, okay? And that's going to help us find the percent change. So we need to do 16 divided by 54. But in order to do that, we have to add a decimal place and some zeros to the 16, don't we? And then we do 54 divided by, I mean, 160, I'm sorry, 160 divided by 54 because we had to add that because it won't go into 16, will it? We raised our decimal point up right there. So we know 54 will go in two times, and it'll be 108 from the little multiplication we did on the side. All right? We do our subtraction. We get 52. 54 can't fit into 52. We drop another 0 down. And a little multiplication on the side. We find out a 9 can fit in there, so that's 486. We do our subtraction and get 34. Drop another 0 down. Multiplication on the side says a 6 would work, so we put that there. And we do our subtraction and get a 16, but mm, we're starting to get too far away from that decimal point again. And we're just trying to find a percent, which is just a couple of spaces away from a decimal point. So we stop. So now we've got 2.296, all right? And we need to round that to write it as a percent. Well, we really didn't even need this. 6, except he's going to tell the 9 to go up to a 10, isn't he? And if that 9 goes up to a 10, then what's going to happen to the 2? It's going to become a 3, because 2 and 1 is 3. And our approximate increase is going to be a 30%. So when you have like a 9 and a 6 like we did, and this 6 tells the 9 to go up, it will push the next one up and it'll end up being a 3. So maybe you can look at it as the 6 is telling the 29 to go up. See? So it's going up to a 30. All right? So we use our approximation sign, and we're all done. All right? So I hope after those few examples, you really understand how to use this formula, this equation, to find the percent change. Okay? And we're going to do percent decrease next. And for those of you who feel like I've really helped you, if you'd like to support me and become a monthly patron, you can go to patreon.com. I think it's like a dollar a month, and you can help support Joanne's school. I'd really appreciate it. I'll see you next video. Keep your chin up. Bye.